Hi, I'm Adrian and I'm a designer. And my name is Thoreen and I'm a developer. And today we're going to show you how you can turn your box into features. But first, a drink as per usual. In this case we are drinking Naturfrisk Mint. And it's organic soda from Denmark, I think. Oh, I'm excited. Denmark? Come on, give it to me. I'm oh, sorry. Jesus. <laughs> want it. It, it's non-alcoholic, so I don't think oh, you want it. Mm. Oh, okay. Ah, there is yeah. a trend here with pea-colored uh, <laughs> soda. I don't know what's going on with that. Okay. It's like a marketing thing. You know, same color goes in as it comes out. <laughs> Cheers. Okay, it tastes much better than it smells. Mm. It smells like water that you boil broccoli in. <laughs> <laughs> um, it tastes like um, a mint julep without the alcohol. So basically a bummer julep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That sucks. <laughs> That's not bad. So, uh, talking about bugs and features. Yeah, mostly about how you're going to do debug those bugs. Okay. Well, that, that seems fair because I create a fair amount of bugs. I'm, I'm Pretty good at that. So you're going to have like, yo, 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 coding here. And then you're like, well, yeah. I, I don't know who, who said this, but um, if debugging is the process of taking bugs out, then programming is the process of putting bugs in. I don't know who said it. <laughs> Put it in but, the comments if you know. Yeah. Uh, but that's basically what I do. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I have a little bit more experience in writing CSS than you may have. But, um, but still, shit happens. And there is Probably just, happens to everyone. Yeah, and there is just no way that you're going to write software without bugs, at least from the get-go. And mo this is mostly to do with how, how fluid a process uh, design is, because but that's, that's an added, added thing because added complication. as a developer, we pretty much, most of the times, we know what the end result should, yeah. should be. Well, you, you're more goal oriented. That makes it better to make informed decisions on how, how to structure From things. From the get go, yeah. Yeah. And for a designer, it's sometimes, especially if you're designing code, it's sometimes a bit uh, various states of completion, uh, things you like about some things, things that will change eventually. So, so basically, you have a, a white wall, and then you're going to try, oh, maybe this color of paint. Yeah, no, no, OK. And then <laughs> That's not part of the debugging process. <laughs> but you know, uh, that's what your designers do, right? Just fuck about with colors? Yeah, faffing about with colors. That's, yeah. that's our thing. But most of this is uh, the most of the bugs that I encounter, because I don't really do much actually functioning things. Mm. I mean, I fake functions mm. with some JavaScript and stuff, so, so uh, I can present how things work. But I don't really make things that actually work. So they don't have any back end yeah. or whatever yeah. stuff in there. Uh, so most of my bugs are visual bugs. That's why, but we're, we're talking here about uh, debugging CSS. Yeah, so we're talking about styling things anyway. Yeah. And most of that is styling leaks. I think 99.9% .9 .9 of the times you have uh, three situations. I think that's not only true for designers, but it's also true for developers. And that's when you have worked with uh, CSS or SAS, is that you will have styling leaks or interference of other uh, styles, classes, mm -hmm. etc. Okay. The other thing is, yeah, you're just doing it wrong. You don't understand the property right or you're using it in a wrong way. Um, that's, that, yeah, that's so unfamiliarity, same. basically. Uh, unfamiliarity, okay. yeah. That, it does happen yeah. to me a lot. And then there is the last one, and that's the browser is buggy. But I've maybe accounted that twice. Yeah, but keep in mind that this is in order. Um, yeah, <laughs> so, and it's, it so dramatically decreases it, it dramatically as you get lower. It dramatically decreases. Um, well, I have... Uh, I have worked with people that started the other way around, and they did something, and then it was, yeah, the browser is buggy. I'm a bit of a masochist there. I, I usually look at my own faults uh, very first, because I, I try to figure stuff out for myself, and sometimes that takes uh, quite a while. So I'm late at night, I'm still trying. <laughs> why, why is it not working? <laughs> with the toothpick thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I ask you, and then it's fixed in <laughs> two and a half seconds. But yeah, much of that is, is styling leaks. And um, I do think that it helps if you're a BEM purist. Mm. <laughs> so you have less of that, that it's interfering it, 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 with each yeah, other. Yeah, but, but still, in the, in, and there are just cases that it's very impractical to do it that way. And you have and to, to class work, everything. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. you have to do it differently. And you will encounter some styling mm. leaks. or Especially if you do something with Flexbox. I mean, even if you use BEM, Flexbox 
container will have properties will have effect on how the children act so yeah. this even there there might be some interference yeah there might be some leaking and for some things it's just not practical i mean uh, you know to class every instance of your typography system is not very practical no. so there you get more of the uh, more of the yeah. interference and especially if you use uh, em as measurement yeah that, that then yeah. you get a lot of uh, because unexpected the, the, results. The, yeah, because of the inheritance. How would you deal with solving these problems if you encounter them? And obviously, one of the first thing you do is probably open the dev tools in your browser of choice. Yeah, that's, uh, I always have them open. Basically, if I work, I'm working mostly in the dev tools because <laughs> yeah. otherwise I just don't know what's happening. Yeah, and the first thing you're going to do is, okay, you see something goes wrong and that you use inspect element. Okay, let's have a exactly. look at uh, what styles are even applied to Yeah, this. exactly. That's uh, really practical because it basically just lists all the things that affect this one element. Yeah. So you and can, then you can you can start tinkering with the styles right right there in the dev tools. Um, yeah, but I, there's like an attention span for me in this area. Uh, so I, I so you that. change too much and then and then because you lose everything on refresh, I try to test one property at a time. So if if something is broken, I test. Does this work? No. Does this work? No, and I, I use that as a separate thing. I don't stack different properties yeah. on top of each other because otherwise it, it's easier to do it in Sublime and save it and refresh so I can keep the progress that I'm, that yeah. I'm actually making. But let's say you, uh, you have inspected the element and you can, cannot figure out, immediately figure out what's wrong. Mm. And um, well, one of the tricks, I and it's really old tricks uh, that I have used since even before we had DevTools. I mean, in Internet Explorer 6, 7, there weren't really any DevTools. Okay. Also in the I first in the, in the first fi Firefox version, you had, had uh, and then Firebug came uh, came along, and that was when the yeah it was really nice that mm -hmm. we could actually inspect stuff. Um, but one of the tricks we used is adding borders. So you just have okay border one pixel solid red, right. just to still see use okay what is the, what is that box and what does it do? Does mm -hmm. are there any floats falling out? I uh, still use that uh, quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, most of of my bugs are either styling leaks or they are uh, like you said floats that are falling out or things that don't wrap right or yeah. and that yeah. it's really helpful to to see that or yeah. see how how the browser interprets your code and yeah. how it displays it, especially if something is not visible as such. Yeah. So for instance, it's just an element with no background and just has something yeah. in it, and that's the thing that you display. Yeah. That's really interesting. And it, I think that's still one of the, the most effective things that you can, yeah. you can actually use. And of course, the DevTools nowadays give you access to uh, debugging animations and transitions. Yeah. Uh, actually, that, I wouldn't even call that a thing that you use for debugging. But mostly for figuring out how should the transition progress. So you so you, so you would actually make the transition in DevTools and then yeah. put it back. Because yeah. it's just it's easier than going yeah. to uh, Sublime or whatever editor you use and then saving and then having the browser yeah. refresh and then looking yeah. at it and then yeah. and the same goes uh, for for state. You can uh, actually say, okay, show me the hover. You can show me the hover state. Yeah. It, it took me a while to figure that out. Actually, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, as you can see on the screenshot here, is that you uh, yeah you can check them which state you want to have the hover, the yeah. active, etc. And it will show it that. It will just on. fix them and then show you the properties that are then applied. Exactly. Which is really interesting. Actually, a uh, quick note on the uh, animation part is also that you have timelines, which you, I mean, you can, when you code it, you can't really see how does the animation progress exactly. Yeah. That's really interesting. And you can also tweak easings, uh, I think in Chrome there's now, or Chrome Canary. Yeah. There are features that allow you to actually tweak the easings and stuff, and that's that's really really cool. It it's is a control that you simply, uh, well, you have the same controls, but you don't have the visual insight into the controls. Which right. for us, figuring out how the animations actually work and interact, so that yeah, is very very helpful. Yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah. And of course, there um, there is the uh, computed values because um, you are applying styles and cascading style sheet, as the name said, they cascade. Yeah. So um, there's inheritance there. There is inheritance, and different selector may do different things. And in the end, it may not be that easy to figure out why, for instance, the font size is this big and yeah. what exactly it is. And that's you can use the uh, the computed values tab to yeah. see. Okay, this is the exact thing that's being applied, or this is the exact font. If you scroll down in Chrome, yeah. for instance, this is the exact font that's being applied to this. Yeah, uh, especially with font size, I find that incredibly helpful. Especially if you if you size your fonts in EMs in your inspect tab, it'll just say, well, it applies a font size of one EM, but you don't know what one EM is. If it's nested in something else that yeah. says it's half, then it'll be 
it'll be half. Yeah. Uh, so that's when when computed values uh, really really, really yeah. helpful there. <laughs> yeah. So that's that that's dev tools. I think it's really well spent time to invest playing around with. Yeah, that figuring tool. out yeah. how it works. <laughs> also, the more obscure uh, stuff. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm still learning about dev tools. Uh, even even uh, in our previous episode where we talked about uh, paint times and you can see how how and when stuff renders. Mm. I mean, that's incredibly interesting. And I had no idea. I that, mean, that was in there. That was in there, and that you could record stuff, and uh, yeah. So that's you so, learn stuff. So that's day. so that's Dev tools. Other uh, little helpers are um, actually <laughs> <laughs> um, having a set of CSS mixins that you can use as uh, well SAS mixins. We use SAS, so you can have uh, helpers like stuff that displays what media query is being yeah. applied. And that's really useful. Yeah, and that works, yeah, that works really well if you have a, a map of the breakpoints and then you can use your helper to show a little yeah. box in a before on the HTML to show you exactly. Yeah, and as you say, it's a tablet landscape, yeah, tablet whatever. Yeah. And that also helps with the debugging if you run into problems and you don't know in which media query you are. I mean, you can see it also in the in the uh, inspect. You can see which yeah, yeah of course. But, it, that, but it's just quicker if you see. Okay, I'm now in the tablet. Yeah. Or what, whatever you yeah. call it, whatever size. Yeah. yeah. And but then there okay. is, of course, if you work with a tool like SAS, you might you have use the inspector. And the inspector says, okay, you're on line X of uh, of this file. Mm -hmm. But that's not really useful if you nope. have multiple includes, uh, multiple imports, and um, and definitions that won't be outputted in the CSS. So mm -hmm. there, there's a solution to that. It's called source map. And I've made a little demo that will show you that it can be really useful to uh, to use these. OK, cool. So I have a really simple page here. It's just uh, h1, some paragraphs, and a highlighted paragraph. So here's the HTML. And then here is the, the, the SAS code. And we have some variables uh, at the top. Um, and obviously, they won't be outputted. No, no, it'll so, just put in the color. Yeah. So if I don't have if I don't have source maps, I'm going to do inspect element on this uh, on this p, p, p with class highlight. Um, it will show me general CSS line twelve. First of all, this is not general CSS, and if I look at line twelve, this is something totally different because yeah. it will just look at the generated CSS. Yeah, as exactly. As well. So and that, that might change. Yeah, and I, and this this uh, I mean this is a really simple file here, and yeah. so this is pretty easy to find to still find the resulting. Uh, yeah, no, but yeah. I, I imagine if you have uh, hundreds of pages, uh, that or hundreds of imports, uh, that will greatly I, affect. I don't, I don't hope you have hundreds of imports, but still. No, yeah. but if theoretically, I mean, even if you have ten, that might be difficult. Yeah, so. What SAS actually does, if you generate it, um, it will create a source map. Okay. And that means it will map lines from the uh, original file, the original CSS, uh, uh, SCSS or SAS files, to the actual uh, style that's being applied. Um, so let's have a look at uh, the example, but when we have, a, have source maps. Okay. So again, same page. Um, let's have a look. If I inspect this element, and it says general.scss, so that's already a big difference. Okay, so it knows which SAS file it came from. Exactly. And line 19. Line 19, so yeah, it's right here. That's the one. Yeah. Okay, that's really cool. Yeah, and that's a really useful feature. Uh, so you can actually backtrack where stuff came from. Well, it's been around for some time now, but. You can do that from the beginning. So make sure that your uh, your, your build tool generates uh, source, source maps. maps. Yeah. yeah, because that's really useful for debugging. Mm -hmm. Then again, if you're going to do go put it in production, you probably don't want to deliver the source files. Around. But your browser will automatically download the uh, the source maps for uh, if you do the if you use the inspector. Okay, and another favorite of mine of how to debug things. Um, this is probably more useful for functional things. For me, uh, not so much for styling things. Uh, and I like to use JSBin and CodePen and this kind of thing, so I can make minimal reproductions of what I'm working on. So that you're absolutely sure, sure you ha don't have any interference yes. or yeah. leakage from and anything else. It's also a bit uh, laziness on my part, so I don't have to do a lot of scaffolding, or, or I don't have to set anything up. It's just start writing and figuring things out. The most 
pens that I make or the most things that I make on Jasmine are really, really ugly. It's a proof of concept. I mean, I use this on one hand uh, to figure out if it's even feasible to make. Because yeah, I'm but that's, not going that's to... before it's a bug. Yeah, so I'm not going to spend time styling yeah. stuff that's not going to work. Yeah. This is a bit of a separate discussion, I think, yeah, yeah. because we're talking about debugging SCSS. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, even there, I can... Uh, Isolate my uh, SAS Yeah, code. let's see if I can rep re uh, reproduce the problem with just a few lines of CSS mm -hmm. instead yeah. of having the whole file and then see what is actually acting and what's going yeah. wrong. Yeah, what's so, happening. Yeah. So Absolutely. inspecting that also is a lot easier probably. And Definitely. changing and fixing the problem is also a lot easier because you're not distracted and you don't have any interference by anything else. So mm -hmm. if you fixed it there, you can apply the fix to yeah. your actual... SAS and then, yeah. and you're yeah. not blinded by like hundreds of lines of code that you have to plow through to it. that that as well. Yeah. Well, and then there is a technique, and that's when all else fails is uh, deleting stuff. Um, it's kind of a technique uh, called binary search. So it's really, really like a snowplow. What you do is you're going to delete the bottom half of your uh, SAS file and see if the problem still occur refresh your browser, see if the problem still occurs, and if the problem does occur, that means it's in the top, top half. half. Okay. And then what you do is going, you're going to delete another bottom half of that. Ah, okay, so, so you use a quarter. If it doesn't appear, that means that it's in the second quarter yeah, yeah. of your file. So, so you're going to uh, eliminate where the problem occurs. Um, yeah. that's, that's quite, yeah, what you said, snow plowing. That's, yeah, that's a pretty that's, brute force approach yeah. to, to debug, or at least figuring out where bugs are. It's not even about fixing the bugs. It's no, it's just like finding the bug. Where, where is it? Yeah. yeah, so this is the... Uh, I'm gonna figure out how a washing machine works by smashing it to bits. That's the approach. <laughs> yeah, except, except you're a washing machine repairman, and uh... yeah, you know you can put it back together. There's an undo button on your <laughs> yeah, washing that's machine also, that's on your a... hammer. There's an undo. Yeah. Okay, that's that's interesting. I've never used that, but I, I mean, I can I can see how this would be. It's a uh, it, it's mostly when you're desperate, then you don't know why, and okay. you start. And, and stuff. after you've after you've can't fi figure out why this works, you're starting to test the same code in different browsers and then you find out that it's actually a weird oh. thing in browser X that just doesn't. <laughs> that this. happens. Yeah. I mean, I had this with the Firefox uh, transform origin thing mm. where SVGs would transform weirdly in, in Firefox. And they fixed it in the meantime, but it, it was very jarring for me. It was like, why? Mm. And I used your list, so I started with, you're probably doing it wrong, you're not understanding it right. And it took uh, quite some time before I thought, Maybe it's the browser, and then I started googling that, and then I figured it out. So. Yeah. Right, but you know, it's an edge case. Like I said, it happened to me maybe twice that yeah. it was actually a browser fault. Yeah. And you ha and this is of course something you you will learn when you're debugging is that you get better. This is a skill. Debugging mm. is really is a skill, and you get better at it uh, when, over time. Yeah. Over time, when just doing doing it and debugging stuff, you know, okay, may maybe there is a chance that it might be a browser, and it's fairly cheap to open something in three browsers just to look if it acts the same. Yeah, definitely. So it helps. Yeah. Okay. Right. I think that, that wraps it up. So thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, DigiPaint and Asphalt Photo for making this episode possible. And we'll see you in the next one.